And um, I want to start today with talking about the difference between acceptance and contentment. This is a lesson that somebody gave me many years ago before I had a child with autism, but then when somebody reminded me to apply this to autism, it was a mind-blowing moment for me. So, um, and what, what I was taught was that acceptance and contentment are not the same thing, and that while we never give up, uh, that that's the contentment portion, that we're always striving to something better, it is important on a daily basis to have a moment of inhalation and exhalation where we accept what is, that we not rail against it. And, you know, we had Byron Katie on the show, and she has a book called Loving What Is. Uh, that's like the 13 steps down the road, but just a moment of acceptance. And... <clears throat> You know, uh, it, it's something that can absolutely be applied to anything. That for those of us, myself included, that we have New Year's resolutions about being healthier and perhaps even losing weight, right? One of the reasons why statistically we don't follow through on it is that, <clears throat> you know, you exercise and, and then you're sore and there's no immediate change, right? And so we're not in acceptance and we're not in contentment. We're unhappy, but we're not willing to do the things that we have to do to change it. And instead, if we take a moment and just say, I accept that my weight is not what I want it to be, um, that's where, I'm, where I am today. Uh, and <clears throat> I fully accept that. Then it leaves room for us to look and say, but am I content with that? Is that what I want it to be? And is there something that I can do today to work towards it being something else? It doesn't negate the fact that it is. Um, and it does not negate the fact that my heart and my spirit want to be something else. So if we look at that with autism, um, and I do think that uh, I have so much work to do on acceptance and contentment in so er many areas of my life, including autism, but especially when we were in our intensive behavioral intervention, and I look back through my journals then, it's the, it's the one area where I think I did a pretty good job that I, um, I was never happy with where we were, but I, I spent at least a portion of every single week, I won't say every single day, but every single week where I would say, okay, you know, he has autism and that is not something that I can change right now and I need to love this little boy for all, every single inch of him and everything that he is and even the behavior that I'm struggling with, I need to love him for that. Um, and yet I'm not content with the progress that we have, so this is what we're gonna do. It helped me to stay fresh with therapy. It helped me to keep the therapy going when it was really hard. It helped me to have fun and appreciate him. My husband and I, as we were commemorating the 10 year last year one of the things that we talked about is that you know there are some lessons from when we were in the early intervention that we have not applied to our lives now because our lives were so jam-packed with things that were scheduled and it had to be this and it had to be that we were very particular about saying you know when we have five minutes or when we have a minute and a half we carve this time out as a family and we have fun that when the last therapist would leave and we would close the door behind the last therapist and dinner would be cooking and it would be a mad rush to try to get homework done and to get food on the table whatever we always would stop and put on a song and dance for a minute and a half and you know what's funny about that is that I re that's what I remember I, I can remember the feeling of oh we have so much to do I remember that but I remember the joy of when we danced around the room and had a minute, and we don't do that anymore. Now, I can accept that and say, oh, our lives are busy and we're different. I'm not content with that, and it gives me an opportunity to make a new choice today instead of flushing the whole thing away, because this is what we do a lot of times is we go, it's this, and it's all-encompassing. Well, that's blue, or that's red when in fact our lives are full of gradients. Um, and when we work on acceptance and contentment and say, well, this is what is, this is the part of it that I'm not happy about with, we get gradations. We enjoy ourselves more and we are in the present.